Hello guys and welcome to a new video and today's video will be split into two parts First of all, I'm gonna answer a question that I get a lot which is how to improve hipfire accuracy And the second part will be a crazy game full of players and action from the second I landed all the way to the end I hope you guys find this video useful and let's get started I'll start with the most important tip and it's related to the settings. I already explained it in a previous video but I'll add it again because that video was too old. So when it comes to hipfire there is one setting that you need to adjust which is the third person sensitivity. And what it does is it controls the speed of your aim when you're using hipfire. So you basically need to find the right speed that allows you to trace and track enemy movement easily. If you feel like it's too slow then increase it and if you're struggling to aim because it's too fast then decrease it. Very simple and straightforward yet it makes a huge difference in having high hip fire accuracy and don't expect to get it right from the first try just keep adjusting as you play until you find the perfect number it may take many games and you might find yourself changing it from time to time Next, choosing the right gun. Because not all guns are good for hip fire, and the best ones are the SMGs. But again, not all of them are good. So the question is, how do you know which gun has good hip fire accuracy? You can tell by the size of the crosshairs. Smaller crosshairs means better accuracy. For example, in here we have the Fennec on the left and the RUS on the right. And you can see that the RUS has much smaller crosshairs, which means it has better hip fire accuracy than the Fennec. And my advice to you, if you're new to hip fire and you want to master it, then use the RUS to practice. Because not only it has good hip fire accuracy, but it's also very easy to control, as it has less recoil compared to other SMGs like the Fennec. Before I explain this, I have to point out that this is how I play, and it doesn't mean it's the best way. Don't get me wrong, try harden is good, but don't go too far, because there are many players that jump and slide while shooting. I mean, it can be useful to dodge bullets, but it can also lower your hip fire accuracy for two reasons. First of all, jumping increases the bullet spread, so you end up missing more shots. But most importantly, when you're jumping while shooting, then you're doing many actions at once. So you're shooting and jumping and aiming and moving, which means you're using four buttons at the same time. And and your brain struggles to process all these actions which can result in bad aim. So what I suggest is for you to focus on sideway movement only, especially if you're new to hip fire. This way you're doing 3 actions instead of 4. And if you notice in my gameplay videos, I don't really have any fancy movements. I just move sideways left and right. But that's also the reason why my aim is good. Because I'm only using 3 buttons so my brain can focus more on aiming. Not only I'm able to hit most of my shots, but I'm also able to hit critical body parts like the head and chest. And if you think about it, it doesn't matter if the enemy jumps or slides or even flies. In the end, the player with the best aim wins. But again, I'm not saying extra movement is necessarily bad. If you're able to slide and jump while having good aim, then go for it. But for me personally, I just use sideway movement most of the time and it's working fine for me. I win most of my close range fights. And I mostly slide when I have to reload or when I want to switch to another target. Most of you know this, but I added it for new players. First of all, you can boost the hipfire accuracy of your gun from the gunsmith. Starting with the most important attachment, which is the MIP laser. You can also add Merc foregrip and MIP flash guard for extra accuracy. Other than that, you can boost the hipfire accuracy even more when you're in the game itself by using a hipfire mod. And finally, practice. I know this tip exists in almost every single tips video, but trust me, all the things I shared in this video so far contributes in like 30% only. The other 70% depends on practice and how much you play. Also, don't expect to master hipfire when all you do the entire game is camp with your seeds planted around the house. Go out and have fun and try to be aggressive. Kill and get killed, that's the only way to improve. And for that, I highly recommend playing Alcatraz whenever it's out. Actually, it should be out by the time I post this video so go right now and grind it. It's not only good to improve your hip fire but it will also improve your close range fights overall as it puts you under a lot of pressure. Other than Alcatraz warfare mode can also be good to practice. That was everything regarding the tips and now we'll move on to the gameplay. I hope you guys enjoyed.
So we are back to blackout on this one. I've been playing both maps these days and I'm really enjoying both of them. I'm also with randoms because I've been playing solo that day and I was getting easy games with too many bots. And playing with randoms seems to put me in a match with a lot of real sweaty players. But anyway, this game ended up being, I want to say a solo versus squad game because we lost two teammates in the start. But number three survived and we continued together. He wasn't really the best, but he helped. As for the guns that I'll be using in this game, a Fennec for close range, and an M4 that I stole from one of the enemies, which had a really good build by the way. You should try it sometime. Engaging the enemies! The revived flight will arrive in one minute. Enemy down! Be careful, a poltergeist is active. Chip terminal is almost ready. Changing mag, cover me. Supply box here. I could have gotten number two stack, but it was too risky. And honestly, I was under a lot of pressure to the point where I totally forgot about it. Engaging the enemy! The airdrop is coming. Drop is coming. This is probably one of the longest fights I had in Rivertown. There were many players around and that KGF clan kept reviving each other. But that's the reason why I love landing here. Even if the enemies don't land here, they mostly come anyway after they finish looting and clearing the area they landed at. So I mostly get a lot of action. 
And just when I thought we can finally catch a break and start getting objectives in peace, I was wrong. There was another squad near us and we tried to sneak behind them while they're busy fighting to upgrade our classes, but it was a bit late. box here. Supply box here. I knocked one of them, but since we were pinned in a bad position, the best option was to get out using the ATV. Then I used it to locate the remaining enemies. So here is one inside the smoke, and the second one was on the roof. So the best decision here was to eliminate the one on the roof first, since he had high ground. But sadly, it didn't go as planned. Engaging the enemy. Enemy down. Supply box here. As you can see, the amount of pressure we were under was insane. Enemies kept showing out of nowhere, and I think the KGF clan were looking for us trying to get their revenge. But now I can safely say that it's finally over, and for the first time since the start, I was able to catch my breath and head towards the next objective, which is getting my loadout Fennec from the airdrop. After that, we heard shots nearby, so we headed towards them right away. It was the final circles and there were 8 players remaining. And all of them were real players, but I got 2 loadout guns and 300 HP, so I was ready for anything. I really hope you guys find the tips useful and I hope you enjoyed the gameplay. And if you did, as always, a like would be highly appreciated. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.